On the news bulletin, United States President Joe Biden will travel to Germany and Angola October 10 to 15, the White House said on Tuesday, in what will be his first visit to Africa as president. Biden's first stop will be Germany, where he will express appreciation to Germany for supporting Ukraine's defense against Russia, among other issues, according to the White House. While in Angola October 13 to 15, Biden will meet with President Joe Lorenko. The two leaders will discuss increased collaboration on shared priorities, including bolstering economic partnerships and enhancing peace and security, the White House said. Biden had hoped to visit Angola late last year but the trip was postponed after the outbreak of the Israel-Hamas war in October. Biden has pledged closer United States partnership with democracies on the African continent, as Beijing invests heavily in the region. In Nigeria, Nigerian officials seized 42.77 pounds of cocaine worth 4.66 billion naira from a passenger who arrived at Lagos Airport on a flight from Ethiopia, its anti-drug agency said on Tuesday. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency said it arrested a 48-year-old Nigerian businessman who had been convicted of trafficking last year but paid a fine to avoid jail time on September 18. He was allegedly carrying 817 wraps of cocaine. Nigeria, Africa's most populous country with over 200 million people, has in recent years gone from being a transit point for gangs moving drugs between South America and Europe to a full-blown consumer and distributor. The agency will continue to work to disrupt the activities of drug cartels operating in the country, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency Chief Mohamed Bouba Marwa said in a statement. Moving on, Burkina Faso's junta said it had uncovered an international plot to overthrow it, and which included the massacre in August of hundreds of civilians by Islamist insurgents. Some critics and analysts however said the junta's statement was an attempt to deflect blame for the killings and security situation in the country. The junta came to power in a 2022 coup pledging to beat back jihadists who have ravaged the landlocked West African country for years. But instead violence has increased leaving the regime worried about popular discontent, its critics and analysts say. In the worst of a recent surge of attacks, insurgents affiliated with Al-Qaeda slaughtered hundreds of people who were digging defensive trenches around the town of Barcelo on August 24, prompting an unusually open outpouring of anger and grief. The junta has said little about the massacre, ignoring calls for the military to take responsibility for having ordered civilians to dig trenches without protection in an area rife with jihadist activity. In a lengthy statement, Interim Security Minister Mohamed Usana said the Barcelo attack was a first step meant to create chaos and facilitate the infiltration of several terrorist groups into the capital Ouagadougou. The statement accused opponents of the junta, backed by Western intelligence and European mercenaries, of a vast multi-pronged destabilization plot orchestrated from other countries including Ivory Coast, Ghana and Nigeria. The junta did not provide any evidence to back up its accusations. One of the named suspects, investigative journalist and junta critic Newton Ahmed Barry, rejected all the accusations on Facebook. After Barcelo, they needed to find a diversion given the scale of the tragedy, he posted. Several civil society sources and analysts told reporters they agreed with Barry's interpretation, but did not wish to be named because they feared retaliation against themselves or their relatives from the authoritarian junta. This is a vulgar attempt to deflect responsibility for what happened to throw the blame on the opposition and paint them as accomplices, said one analyst referring to the Al-Qaeda-affiliated group that claimed responsibility for Barcelo. The junta did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Reporters have documented how the regime has suppressed opposition by abducting, torturing and forcefully conscripting its critics. I'm Christy. The news bulletin will be back shortly. Subscribe to Kashimawo TV. See more, hear more. Welcome back. This is the news bulletin and I'm Christy. Still on the news bulletin, 
The governor of South Kivu province in the Democratic Republic of Congo has approved the resumption of all mining activities in the region but said authorities would continue their investigation into the sector. All mining activities in the rest of region, which is rich in minerals such as gold, copper, diamond, tin, tantalum and cobalt, were suspended in July when Governor Jean Jacques Perusi Siddiqui ordered companies and operators to leave mining sites to restore order to mining operations. Following a preliminary investigation after the ban in July, more than 550 mining operators out of nearly 650 were found to be operating without proper authorizations, a provincial mines minister told reporters in early September. He added that more than 45 people, including two magistrates, involved in fraud and the illegal exploitation of minerals in the province had been arrested. Today, we're opening up mining activities throughout the region, Governor Siddiqui told mining operators during a meeting on Monday. He added that a team would be dispatched to carry out investigations into each mining company to prevent the exploitation of the local population. If they violate any of our commitments, we'll shut down that company or cooperative and hit them with exemplary fines, the governor warned. Authorities in South Kivu province have previously accused several firms of illegal activities including mining without permits, dumping chemicals into water sources and underpaying workers. Finally on the news bulletin, Somalia accused Ethiopia of smuggling weapons on Tuesday amid fears that arms going into the conflict right in Horn of African nation could end up in the hands of Islamist militants. The neighbors traded barbs a day after an Egyptian warship unloaded heavy weaponry in Somalia's capital Mogadishu, the second shipment since a security pact in August. Landlocked Ethiopia, which has thousands of troops in Somalia to fight al-Qaeda-linked insurgents, has fallen out with the Mogadishu government over its plans to build a port in the breakaway region of Somaliland in exchange for possible recognition of its sovereignty. The spat has drawn Somalia closer to Egypt, which has quarreled with Ethiopia for years over Addis Ababa's construction of a vast hydro dam on the Nile River. Ethiopia's foreign affairs minister Tay Selassie said he was concerned arms from external forces would further exacerbate the fragile security and would end up in the hands of terrorists in Somalia, Ethiopian news agency reported. Responding, Somalia's foreign minister Ahmed Moalem Fiki told reporters, Ethiopia's motivation behind these defamatory statements is its attempt to conceal the illegal smuggling of weapons across the Somali borders which are falling into the hands of civilians and terrorists. He gave no evidence for the accusation, but added that Ethiopia was trying to divert attention from violations of Somalia's sovereignty. Last week, Somalia accused Ethiopia of shipping arms to the semi-autonomous state of Puntland. Somalia has threatened to expel Ethiopia's troops by the end of the year if the port deal was not scrapped. The United Nations Security Council lifted a more than three-decade arms embargo on Somalia in December. Rashid Abdi, an analyst with the Sahan Research Think Tank, said the potential for weapons landing in the wrong hands, such as Al-Shabaab militants, was high. Al-Shabaab is a major beneficiary and in 2023 harvested massive quantities of weapons by conducting raids on enemy bases, he said. That will be all for now on the news bulletin. Thanks for watching.